I was over in the party supply section and I found these cute little tins that I just thought they were too cute to pass up. So I went ahead and got three of them. So I started by spray painting them with, I think it was around three coats of white spray paint. I guess I'm doing a lot of spray paint in this video, but you know, I guess it's spring and I can spray paint more. Whereas in the winter, you guys know it's hard to spray paint. So anyways, I spray painted them with three coats of spray paint. Next, I thought these jars would be so cute with little decals on it. So I went into Cricut Design Space on my phone and I just was kind of searching for herbs. I found this cute little design that someone had created and I put it into design space. I sized the pieces down so that they fit for my containers and then I clicked on make it. I also added in that I was going to be using a permanent vinyl and then I fed this through my Cricut Joy. I love how with the Cricut Joy, I don't have to use a mat. It's just really easier for smaller jobs. I've had people ask, should I get a Cricut Joy or a Cricut Explore Air? Explore Air will do all the jobs, but the Cricut Joy is just great for those small jobs. And I feel like the type of stuff I make, the Cricut Joy is easier. I would say if you want something really easy that will do small jobs, the Cricut Joy is definitely what you wanna use. I find that I pull my Cricut Joy out more just because it's small and compact and I can easily use it. Once I cut those out, I'm actually going to just pull them off of the mat because I find that when I use transfer paper after I spray paint, it tends to pull up the spray paint. So I'm just going to put the labels onto my containers. I don't have that problem if I use chalk paint, but for some reason when I use spray paint, the transfer tape will pull it up. Next, I just went and purchased three herbs that I'm going to plant in the planters. And here's a look at how these look sitting out in my kitchen. All right, you guys, so this next project, honestly, I changed up so much of it. In the end, I like the way it turned out, but you guys are gonna see, I spent a lot of time painting this piece. I grabbed a normal container over in like the party supplies, and I was going to be using this to create my container. So I kept the base the way it was, but I wanted to use the top edge to make some handles. So I went in and I cut off the top circle so that I was left with that like one inch strip around the edge of the lid. Next, I cut that in half and I bent those pieces so that I could create two handles on either side of my container. I used hot glue to put them into either side of my container, trying to make them as even and level as possible. So where I kind of couldn't figure out what I wanted to do was with the color. So I started by spray painting it and that was okay, but I decided I didn't really like that color. And then I brought it in and painted it the color Fawn by Waverly. I decided that was way too brown. So then I said, okay, I'm gonna paint it with mineral. Once I got it to mineral, which is more of a grayish beige color, I like that one better. And I get asked you guys where to get the Waverly paint. You can buy that at Walmart. And I link everything for you down in the description box. So if you're ever looking for anything in my videos, just go down in the description box and it'll take you to that link. So once I got the paint under control, then I turned my attention to what I was going to put on to this container. A few months ago, I took a shopping trip to Five Below and I got this cool blanket that had some fringe on it. So I'm gonna be cutting out that fringe to use in this project. This blanket was only $5. So I'm gonna cut out a piece of fringe and then I'm actually going to cut it in half again. Now I have this die kit that I bought probably last summer. I've used a couple of containers out of it and I'm gonna be using the dark blue die from this package, but you could just go and get a package of any color die you want at the craft store. I'm gonna put the trim in a bowl and then I'm just going to add in the die. Make sure you wear gloves. And then I'm just going to move the trim around until it's completely saturated with dye. I'm gonna let this sit overnight. And then instead of rinsing the pieces out because I wanted the color to be really concentrated, I just set them out where they could dry completely so it 
fully had the dye on it. Now, I think this works because I'm not gonna be using this, you know, to wear, so I don't necessarily need to wash this. Plus the trim was a little fragile, that I think if I would have gone through the process of rinsing it all out, it would have kind of fallen apart. So I didn't do that. Next, I came back in with my fringe and I measured out pieces to create diagonal slats on my container. And I'm gonna hot glue those down. Then I decided to go the other way and make kind of a crisscross pattern with my fringe. And here's a look at how this container turned out. Hey guys, I'm Liz and you're watching my second DIY channel where I post daily DIY videos. You may be familiar with my main channel, Liz Fibic DIY, but I'm glad that you found me over here on my second channel. Make sure that you're subscribed so you just get notified every day when I post our daily DIY video.